boat and let the thing run dead is pretty stupid. So there Clive had his jib off. Is that normal where you were looking for depth or would you have uh, had the jib on to, to get more, even more power into the boat for depth? Well, he's got the jib on now. Um, I would say he just had his hands full for a bit. Um, but you're much better off getting the jib back on and making everything work for you. The jib is still quite a considerable amount of area in these boats. Poppy noticed there he's taken SAS Racing, whereas SAS Racing were ahead of him going around the last night. This is another very competent skipper. You can see the main ship going in and out there without much force alteration. And of course the old flat is fast is particularly related to the B14. Same as any skiff. It, um, in these boats it tends to be how much you want to let out as much main ship as possible, not keep as much in as possible. That way the boat remains flatter and uh, correctly poised for the next onslaught of a gust. Here the people are running too square to try and get to a bottom mark. It would have been better to wind it back up and throw another jibe in. On this little short leg um, up to the uh, jibe mark, Julian, I from recall you were the only uh, boat that actually carried its kite successfully up there. You're dipping the wing in. Can you comment on that? Well, the leg was very, very tight and we were in the lead, so we uh, took the normal option of setting the kite, even though we weren't quite sure we would make it. Once the kite was set, we were pretty sure we weren't going to make it. One of the tricks you can do is to drag the leeward wing. This slows the boat down and means that the apparent doesn't run too far forward. Uh, so physically we're applying a little bit of brake here, uh, putting the brakes on a bit to try and ensure that we make the mark. It's quite a common trick actually. Let the boat heel, drag the leeward wing, which actually brings the apparent aft. As it was, the wind died and we could have made it easily. <laughs> but you didn't know that at the time. What about uh, in some uh, classes it's quite common to uh, let the jib go on a, on a tight uh, uh, reach. Is that um, advisable in the B14? Well, it's advisable in any class, but again, if you're trying to make some height and for some reason you uh, get it wrong and the spinnaker flags, uh, you want the jib on at that point to save yourself. So it's normally a better option to, to have some jib on so there's something to keep the boat in balance. She flagged the spinnaker. Again, crew out, boat's coming up. The parents got back up again early, so the boat's moving freely and fast. As you start to come out into the left-hand side of the course, which was the favoured and uh, windier side, you make some adjustments here. Basically we're just moving the crew weight as the wind increases. You've got to get more crew weight out to get more depth. If I'd sat in the boat there, the boat would be going half the speed in roughly the same direction. It's important to get the crew weight out to get the boat moving fast through the water. The boat's moving very fast now, the nose is up, it's dead flat. 
At what uh, factor to the wind would you be doing there? What uh, ratio to wind speed? Uh, you're probably exceeding wind speed. Remember, this was the first race. The wind can get above 14 or 15 knots. Here we are running a little bit dead coming into the drop. Um, we, we were probably coming down wind there in the 18s or the 20s. You can also see here that we have kept the boat going high to keep the pace on and accepted the fact to do one extra jive. Uh, again, it's only a little Z jive just to get down to the mark. But it, that is far more beneficial than allowing the boat to run dead for the last 100 yards to make the mark. This would have been a much faster course of action. You can notice Peter there has got the kite down. While we've gone around the mark, it's again maximising the period of time the kite's up to get down there, but not overshooting the mark. All of these things will carve minutes off your race time. This is uh, Sam Williams and Matthew Bassett, who are relatively new to the class, but are very experienced sailors. They're, uh, they've handled the transition well. Yes, they're doing it very nicely. I mean, they need a lot more rig tension. When you talk about uh, rig tension, the B14 with its fiberglass tip mast, um, how important is the uh, rig tension and the um, setting of that before the race? Well, it's quite important because the tension of the upper shrouds, the shrouds we call the cap shrouds, will basically affect how much camber the whole rig has. The tension of the lower shrouds will, will adjust the four state tension and, and the appointing capacity. So in light air, you ease, ease the rig. In a breeze, you bring it on, and it will all be dependent upon crew weight. Here we have the case of uh, the crew not quite getting the kite into the bag as quickly as would be uh, the most desirable situation. <laughs>